Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday after Pentecost. If you have your orders of worship with you, you can follow along with me. We begin with the gathering words. Strangers visit Abraham and Sarah and they welcome them with a feast. How wonderful. Strangers promise Sarah and Abraham a child in their old age. Too wonderful. Strangers leave Abraham and Sarah to wait and ponder. Is anything too wonderful for God? Come, let us worship our wonderful God. Holy One, who we so often don't recognize, come into our midst and make your presence known. Renew our strength, refresh our imaginations, retool our weary efforts to carry your peace into the world. Amaze us with your power to make all things new and let us face your world with curiosity and hope in the name of the one who leads us on the way, Jesus the Christ. Amen. this week from Peggy S. We have an update. An update on Peter, husband of Maury K. Peter is off the ventilator and is improving daily. Peter and Maury are both very thankful for your prayers. And an update on Don D. He had an additional surgery this week on his wrist, stemming from the bad break that he had back in January. Everything went well with it, and his surgeon was optimistic that this would give him better use of his two fingers. And Debbie B. has a bad stomach and intestinal bug this week and is asking for prayers that she doesn't end up in the hospital with it. So our prayers are with you, Debbie. As far as birthdays this week, today is Mike W.'s birthday. So if you see him, wish him a happy birthday. And 
Wednesday the 17th is Diana L's birthday. For all of these celebrations that we have this week, these wonderful things that have gone on, and for those who we want to lift up in prayers, those that I have read, those that you have shared online, those that you hold up in your hearts right now, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your mercy and your love to be poured out on these individuals. We thank you for your steadfast love. Hear our prayers this morning, O God, those that we have lifted up out loud, those that we share in the quiet of our hearts with you alone. We know that you hear them all, and we trust in your mercy. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, continuing with chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. God appeared to Abraham by the oak grove of Mamre, while Abraham sat at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Looking up, Abraham saw three travelers standing nearby. And when he saw them, Abraham ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, Abraham said, If I have found favor in your eyes, please do not pass by our tent. Let some water be brought, that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves beneath this tree. As you have come to your faithful one, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves. Afterward, you may go on your way. Very well, they replied. Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried to the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, take a bushel of fine flour and knead it into loaves of bread. Abraham then ran to the herd, selected a choice and tender calf, and sent a worker hurrying to prepare it. Then Abraham took cheese and milk and the calf which had been prepared, and he placed it before the travelers. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. Where is Sarah? they asked. There, in the tent, Abraham replied. One of them said, I will surely return to you this time next year, and Sarah will then have a child. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent just behind him. And Sarah and Abraham were old, well on in years. And Sarah no longer had her periods. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, Now that I am so old and my husband even older, is pleasure to come my way again? God said to Abraham, Why does Sarah laugh and say, Will I really deliver a child at my age? Is anything too extraordinary for God to do? 
At the appointed time, at this time next year, I will return to you and Sarah will have a child. Sarah was afraid and said, I didn't laugh. God said, oh, but you did indeed laugh. God was gracious to Sarah as it had been foretold and did what had been promised. Sarah conceived and gave birth to a child for Abraham who was now in old age at the very time God had promised. They named the child Isaac and Abraham circumcised the child Isaac when he was eight days old according to God's command. Abraham was a hundred years old when Sarah gave birth to Isaac, which means laughter. For Sarah said, Now God has given me laughter, and all who hear of this will laugh with me. She also said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would suckle children? Yet I have given Abraham a child in his old age. Let us pray. Speak to us today, O God, not what I would have to hear, to have to say, but what you would have each of us to hear. Amen. So I used to work in software creation and testing. And each year that I was there, my boss used to come around to each employee for a performance review and a planning session. And I don't remember a whole lot from those reviews except for two questions that were the same year after year. First, what are your goals for the coming year? And then, where do you see yourself in five years? And each time I'd give some vague answer to those questions, I wanted to learn more and become a better programmer and tester. I wanted to advance in the company, eventually making my way out of the vast network of windowless cubicles and perhaps into an office of my own with a real door and a chance to see the sun once in a while. Eventually I did make it out of my cubicle. But by the time that five years came around, I had moved out of my small town, finished my college degree, and was moving from Pennsylvania to Maine to go to seminary. Not exactly the five years that I had planned for. So I don't make five-year plans anymore. I figure there's really no point I can tell you what I'd like to accomplish in the coming years, the things that I hope to keep doing, the areas in which I would like to grow. But I'm done making plans. Because each time I think I'm settled, each time I think I know where God, where life is taking me, it seems like God laughs and says, yeah, but I've got something else in mind for you. Now that's a good thing, I suppose, because I'm much happier here where I am now than I ever was in software engineering. But I can also tell you that if God had told me at the age of 19 that over the next 20 years I would move from Pennsylvania to Maine to New Hampshire and then to Troy, New York serving at churches, speaking and preaching in front of people, making worship videos that are viewed around the world, I'd have laughed. I would have laughed. Because just the absurdity of that idea would have been inconceivable to my 19-year-old self. And yet here we are. Ten years before the three travelers, the three travelers God in disguise, appeared to Abraham under the oak trees at Mamre, God gave Abraham and Sarah a promise. God changed Abram's name from exalted father to Abraham, father of a multitude. God likewise changed Sarai's name to Sarah. 
indicating that they were both changed beings, that the promise that God was giving them would change their lives. Abraham would become the father of a multitude. And as they learned through trying to force God's hand with the birth of Ishmael, no other woman was going to give birth to the promised child. Sarah and Sarah alone would be the woman at Abraham's side, the one who was the mother of multitudes. So that was God's ten-year plan. And yet, when those travelers stopped and accepted the offer of hospitality from Abraham, Sarah laughed as God in disguise revealed that the ten-year plan was now a goal for the coming year. What else would she do? It was absurd. It was inconceivable. How could she, at the age of 90, become pregnant and bear a son? The very idea was laughable. And the text says that Sarah literally laughed in her middle, in her belly. She laughed in her womb. Because she knew that laughter was the only thing that was going to be coming out of that womb. Ironically, it was. Laughter, the child's name, Isaac, means laughter. And God heard Sarah's laugh and he called her out on it. Not to shame her. Not to shame her, but to ask the question that sits at the heart of this text. Is anything too extraordinary for God to do? See, this is where human expectations are met with divine understanding. Where our limited knowledge in comparison pales to the wonders of of which God is capable. Now, one of my favorite movies is The Princess Bride. And if you haven't seen it, it's a, it's a humorous take on a standard fairy tale story in which this beautiful princess is kidnapped by a scheming man and two of his friends. And as they make their getaway, they notice they're being followed by this man in black. And no matter what they do to thwart his efforts, the man in black overcomes it and continues to follow them, closing in on them a little bit at a time. And every time the man in black makes it through one of their traps, the scheming kidnapper shouts, inconceivable and with each shout of inconceivable we laugh a little bit more in the story because every time he thinks that something as he says is absolutely totally and in every other way completely inconceivable it actually happens finally one of the other kidnappers turns to him and says, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Sarah laughed, and God asked, is anything too extraordinary for God to do? You laugh. But what you find to be inconceivable is not outside the realm of what God can do. Yet when God lays out this impossible, inconceivable plan for our lives, what else can we do but laugh? That's what we do. That's what we do when we're faced with the possibility of so much more than our limited minds can grasp. Twenty years ago, I'd have laughed at a vision of where I am today, incredulous 
with laughter, unable to comprehend or imagine that God's vision could possibly come to pass. But I have to believe that God respects that. Because God could have chastised Sarah for laughing, but instead merely stated, oh yeah, you you did indeed laugh. In a way, God acknowledged how hard it sometimes is to believe in God's promises, to see and to buy into God's vision for our world. God understands our laughter at something that seems so impossible. God acknowledges it and reminds us that just because something is inconceivable to us, doesn't mean it can't happen. Last week I watched as our city braced itself for riots that never came. No one was expecting a turnout of 11,000 people to rally for black lives, let alone for that rally to be a peaceful one. Even after three hours, when the majority of folks left for home and a smaller group of a few hundred marched to the police station, I positioned myself on the steps of this church. I knew that our building, only two blocks away from there, could be a place of refuge in the event of tear gas and flashbangs. It could be a place to help those who were injured rest and bandage their wounds. So Lisa and I sat on the steps of the church with some water and first aid supplies that had been donated by our neighbors, the church's neighbors. And we waited. And after a while, some other neighbors came out and and sat on the steps with us. And as we waited through an inconceivably peaceful night, we swapped stories and we laughed together. Laughed in relief of the violence that never came. Laughed as God turned what we thought to be impossible into reality. Now that's not to say that the fight is over. One week of peaceful protests is not going to erase hundreds of years of racism and a system that is inherently flawed. But to those who are fighting, who feel like for every step forward that we take, we then take a step back, please know that there is nothing that is too extraordinary for God to do. See, we can set our goals for the coming year, and we can lay out our five- or ten-year plan. But let us also listen to the God who promised and delivered the impossible time and time again, even when it seems that real change is laughably impossible. Nothing, not one thing, is too extraordinary for God to accomplish. Amen. other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that god is in our land and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our from this time together, with hearts open to the surprising, inexhaustible love of God. Greet friends and strangers with the gifts of Christ. 
mercy, justice, and joy. Expect the Spirit to meet us wherever we are, in struggle, in grief, in peace. Ponder, is anything too wonderful for God? Receive the blessing in the name of the Creator, and of Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard human dignity and save human right. And now know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.